Welcome to Ecuador Oceanman family. In this trip we are going to be three again, Fermin, Max and me. Also we will present you Sara and Diego, our lovely partners here. We are beginning our trip in Quito, being lucky to live in the village house of Diego and Sara. Then we will take a long road trip from Quito to Manta, changing climate zone many times, stopping at the middle of the world and equator. We will try all the local food. We will take a short trip to the jungles in search of monkeys and tarantulas. We are going to meet a lot of hostile Ecuadorian people, drown a little bit in the Pacific Ocean and for sure enjoy our open water swimming event. Good morning world! We arrived to Ecuador, to Quito. Uh, it was a long, long night flight from Madrid. More than 10 hours, I guess. And uh, now we are going to meet Buenas, Max. Encantado. Bienvenido. We just arrived, in, but in the airport, immediately we found something super amazing. We just arrived to the residence, uh, village house of Diego, and it's super cool. Look around, how many flowers? <laughs> we are 2,400 meters above the sea level here. It's a little bit uh, fresh. Look, we tell you in all the places we go, it's uh, hot like crazy and here we can enjoy the fresh and the nature and all the greenery. We are excited. First hours in uh, Ecuador, we just landed at 5 in the morning. Uh, now it's 8.30 and uh, we are going to discover beautiful Quito by the hand of uh, our friend and partner, Diego. Just tell us where we are and uh, what we have just in front of us. Oh, thank you very much. You are welcome. Nice to have you, all of you, in Ecuador, in Quito. We are just next to the city, next to Quito, in one of the valleys uh, called Checa is a small town in the valley of Tobacco and Tumbaya. And what we are seeing is plenty of volcano and mountains. All of the mountains around Quito. The first one that we can see is Cotopaxi. It is one of the most uh, active volcanoes in Ecuador and probably the highest uh, volcano in the world. It's active, plenty of glaciers. And also we can see uh, Quilindaña. We can see Ilinisa Norte, Ilinisa Sur. We've got the Corazon mountain, and of course, we have the Pichinchas. The Pichinchas is that mountain that is next to the city. It's very nice, and it is a fantastic day when we can see everything. So, we are ready for a beautiful day, hopefully. Ecuador. Uh, my name is Paul. Um, I'm going to guide you through this uh, interesting city, colonial city, who was declared in 1979 as the, one of the first uh, cities in the world to be declared a patrimonial city. Where are we right now? This is one of probably the first roads built by the Spaniards. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's called La Ronda, and it was right at the edge of a river. See, where you park today, actually originally was a river. So the city was totally protected naturally by rivers that would cross the town. That's uh, Quito's flag, and it's very interesting. We've been talking before, the strong Spaniard influence in Quito, that you can recognize that influence in the flag. We are in uh, the 24th May uh, Street. Actually, it's like a like a small park, but uh, right behind me, it's uh, it, 
It's a copy of uh, what we call it La Virgen de Quito. It was, a, I guess, the Franciscans one day wake up like uh, thinking that we want to have an apocalyptic version. And the rebellions tell, uh, basically, the tale says that the Virgin Mary will fly away from the devil. And this is the reason our Virgin Mary has wings. So it's not an angel. It's uh, actually Virgin Mary. Max, do you feel that we are, we, we have a lack of oxygen? A little bit, yes. A little bit. Yeah. I can explain you why, because we are right now 2,800 meters. Okay, we are on the main square of San Francis. Actually, when the Spaniards came here in the 6th of December, 1534, they found a massive market of, of local indigenous. They were basically interchanging the products. So, uh, Fray Jodo Corrique, cousin of Charles V, the king of Spain, came with the Spaniards and he started the monastery of the, the San Francisco. This was found in the 25th of January, 1535. So it's 34,000 square meters. And we are on the main square and actually one of the first places built by the Spaniards in Quito. We are now inside of the San Francisco Char Claustro. And Bogdana just told me that this claustro is the same like they were showing in, uh, in Cartagena. Here we have this farm that is called Cumbi. This is the palm that it was uh, traditionally inside of these churches and something that is super interesting is like Ecuador has 160 different species of palm and just to, to have some curious information in Africa there is a 100 kind of palm so here in a small country we have 160. We are on the, on the top of, actually the towers of San Francisco and we can have a magnificent view of the mountain range that divides uh, from the jungle. Actually, that is the uh, Oriental mountain range. And um, that's basically where we get all the water that comes to Quito. Quito is a three million uh, city populated. So uh, it's one of the largest in Ecuador at the moment. That's behind that is the beginning of the jungle and then you will find the beginning of the Amazonas River and that goes to Brazil. Our flag has, is exactly the same as Colombia and Venezuela flag. Uh, the 24th of May 1822 we are getting our independence from Spain and we were annexed to these other territories. That's the reason our flag is exactly the same as a Colombia and Venezuela. But Ecuador in 1900 put a beautiful coral arms that symbolize the union of the country from the highlands and the lowlands. There's a ship in the middle of, of the, uh, these coral arms, of this shield, that represents Guayaquil, the main uh, port in the uh, 17, 1800s in the Pacific and uh, South America. We are on the uh, choir of the San Francisco Church. This uh, choir, it was the, actually the first part restored in the monastery. And right behind me, it's uh, the Virgin of Quito, which is the original uh, sculpture to make La Virgen del Panecillo. These uh, churches have the different de de designs and styles. For instance, the ceiling of this church is uh, between Moor and Baroque. We have a lot of influence basically from, from Spain by that time. So well, there is a, a complete set of, of paintings of the lives of San Francis inside this church. La Escuela Quiteña is uh, one of the best expressions of art in Ecuador. In here in La Compañía de Jesús, uh, in this church, we have uh, many different paintings. And one of those is this one that talks about hell. But La Compañía de Jesús is an icon of um, the Baroque, which is uh, the most uh, expression of design in, in South America. So La Compañía started to be on in 1605 and ended 170 years later, the whole construction of the church and monastery. There's about 90 kilos of gold inside this church. So we have uh, altars, we have um, 
the walls, we have paintings, we have a lot of structures that are all covered with gold leaf. And, and not just that, it is all the different styles and designs that all these indigenous did in the 1700s. Yeah, we have a president who was killed just in that corner, and his name was Garcia Moreno. And that's why this uh, street has got his name, Garcia Moreno. And this is the house of the president, is the Palacio de Carondelet. In this place, we can find three very important towers. Of course, the first one is the president, that's the house of the president. Behind, you can find the house of the mayor of the city, El Alcalde de Quito, and in front of me is the, is the Palacio Arzobispal. It's the principal of the Catholic religion. We are going to eat finally. We are hungry, you can't imagine how much. We have this uh, regime of eating uh, every two, three hours, and we didn't eat since eight in the morning. Yes. Now it's almost two. And also Diego promised to us the gastro tour, gastronomical tour today. ¿Qué tenemos aquí? Sopa de vegetales, tres tipos de ají, quiteño, de maní y de cebollas, camote. El camote que ya no existe. Just, uh, Había camote. <laughs> Quito is a large city, as you can see. It's not like the common city that has a, has an extension in around. Uh, it's a city of 42 kilometers, right? Yes, it's a 42 kilometers long. And how place. much is wide? You know? uh, it's about seven kilometers wide, so it's like a long sausage. And, um, and it, it is place uh, where it used to be uh, like a very big lake. Obviously, the lake is starting to get in shorter in water because the consumption of water by the people has uh, growing from the 16th century. But originally, the city, the Spaniards were thinking, planning to build it in another valley, which is much bigger, much wider, and, and but the reason to move to the altitude is because to avoid any sort of disease, malaria, and this kind of thing. Because this is the, the reason that I was thinking, why to build a city? in a high of 3,000 meters. I, I was trying to understand why the, why the founders of the city decide to make it in that place. See, that, that's the main reason. Uh, and besides, also, another important reason is because the Incas were, were settled here. But the Spaniards always mainly looking for places to find uh, a good living, uh, water, water supply. And, and this small valley is the one that gave them all those facilities. So finally we arrived to El Panecillo. This is this mountain, right? This is called Panecillo? Yes, Panecillo is a hill in the middle of the city. And uh, this is uh, that divides Quito in two parts, the northern part of the city and the southern part of the city. But in El Panecillo we have a very beautiful statue, which is actually a copy from one that is what made we, we were watching in the... Yes, we were saw it in the San Francis church. So this is the statue of what they copy, and actually it was a gift from Spain oh, yeah. in the 19, 1970s. And, um, and it has more than 3,000 pieces between al it's an alloy of metals, which is basically the basis of aluminum. So one of the main reasons is because to avoid like collapsing if it's any tremor. So um, basically the Virgin Mary is facing the northern part of the city. We are at 3,000 meters here above the sea level. Yeah. So we are 200 meters higher than the base of the city of Quito. And, uh, and the statue is about 35 meters high. So uh, we are more than 3,000 meters here. Tell me, this is one coin, one dollar from the United States. And this is mostly used in Ecuador. And even though it's done in the States, it's not used in the North America. Why? Why do you think it's like that? Mm -hmm. No, the reason is because we don't have any currency in here, but we need to buy a lot of things with a small currency. So if we start buying stuff like a Coke, a beer with uh, bills, one dollar bills, it's gonna be destroyed very easy. And we have to send those bills back to the States 
so they have to change for the new ones and they have to send back the new, the new US ones. dollars and that is very expensive so people are in the States say no that is not a very good idea let us prepare coins for one dollar and send it to Ecuador so you will not destroy it that easily like a note We wake up in this marvelous heaven, really heaven place. Uh, we wake up actually at 6 a.m. We did morning running, training, check at the neighborhood. And now we are going to continue our trip. We will move to the center of the world and we will move to Manta where our ocean man race is going to take place. So thank you Diego and Sara for hosting us in this amazing house. And let's continue our trip. the center oh no uh, <laughs> we arrived to the city center of the center of the center of the world ¿Dónde estamos? estamos en la mitad del mundo vamos a visitar el centro y vamos a estar en la parte norte y parte del sur del hemisferio del mundo chulísimo chulísimo tú qué opinas I'm going to explain it in English. ah yes uh, what do you opin um, I, I, I was uh, watching it in, in many documentals and uh, I really wanted to see that place because it's, it's, uh, it's the line which divide uh, the wall in, in two sides from north to south and actually they have something like super cool like the, you can bring your passport and you can put a new stamp that says that you are in the middle of the world. I'm ready, huh? Yes. <laughs> Let's go to get our stamps. Yeah. We are yes. in the middle of the world. This is what said this panel. So yes. I hope that they are not late. Primera toma, Gotana Melnichuk. We are in the center of the world. We are exactly 8,747 kilometers from our home, well, no, almost from our home in Spain, Madrid. Behind me you can see the words showing and we hope, uh, you know, the GPS is not lying. Huh? But we are in the center of the world and now we are going to explore, so we are going to explore something that we don't know. <laughs> what are we, we going to explore? One more try from uh, the previous habitants in Ecuador, how the houses look like. Let us see. Wow. marvelous tree inside which you can hug and it takes all your bad energies and also if you want to have kids this is your trip you can hug it and all the bad energies leave you there, there is one more thing which may traumatize you Max because if you are vegetarian and this is something very cruel but this is the place where Guinea pigs live and Diego told us that they are very tasty Is your new friend? Yes, we are eating what Fermin just cooked for us. Oh. Mira. What is that? Piedras. Piedras. <laughs> mm. Ahora sí. Ay, ay. We got lost. We already almost there. We are in the exact line of the Ecuador. I'm standing between. I'm in the north, in the south. North. And I'm in the two places at the same time. We are going to get the stamps in our passport. This is what we really desire to do here. Who is going to put the stamp? Tírale. Vale. Muchas gracias. We have the stamp. There is. Different places in the world where you can have a stamp um, 
different like a border. So here is one of these. And now we, we have this, like the, the scene that said the 35 that we were in the middle of. We are in a road trip that uh, is going to drive us from uh, Quito to, to Manta. It's a road about, we are going to be seven hours more or less, uh, around 450 kilometers. Um, so we, we ask it to do this because it's the, the way where we are going to, to discover this, this, uh, how the, the, the landscape is going to change. Because basically now we are in the top of the mountain in 2,800 meters and we are going to be until zero meters in Manta and we are going to see how all is changing, also the climate, uh, degree by degree. So Diego told us like we are going to see like 20 different state of climate, right Diego? Yeah, that's right. We are just starting our trip. It's uh, the beginning of the trip. We're gonna make a quick stop in a small town called Pedernales. We're gonna have lunch in there. It's a famous place because of the, the food. It's fantastic for lunch. Uh, so, so let us see how it's going there. But it's super small, so Fermin is going to catch a bigger one. It is cacao. Wow. It's the fruit of cacao. And it smells cacao. Try it, Max. And what is the mm. process? To process it, you have to take out the food that is inside, and then you have to dry. After it's dry, you have to take the, the seed, and then with the seed, you make a, a process to get the. Uh, I think with this we have chance to try it. Yes. Oy. Do you First remember time. the parrots in uh, Colombia which yeah. were selling cacao? Now we have yeah. cacao. <laughs> <laughs> Look how many they are. It's amazing. Full of cacao. Look how big. <laughs> After a long road trip of almost seven hours, after crossing the center of the world, changing climate many times, catching cacao beans, we arrived to Pedernales, we arrived to the Pacific Ocean, and what is very important, we arrived to food. Diego promised us impressive gastronomical experience, so I cannot wait to try it, and I think you want to see it as well, so let's go and check it. You see this car is coming with a lot of sound, they are selling fresh pineapples. Guayana, which we want to try. He's telling that it's very tasty. I we just arrived to Pedernales. It is a very nice restaurant. We're used to, to eat uh, every time we are traveling to Manta. And it is very important, uh, this place is not only because of the food, but also, look at that. That was before the restaurant, before the earthquake in the April 16, uh, 2016. And now there's nothing. Actually, there's nothing. It's a very impolite, the ceiling and we are having food. The first thing that we are gonna have is something called patacones. It is the plantains with traditional cheese from Manabí. We are just in Manabí, in the north part of Manabí. Let us enjoy it. This is for Boca. If it's picante, it's for That me. is picante. That is very, very But the taste is amazing of the cheese. Yeah. Ah, it's pimiento también. And this is picante. This is for you. Uh, this is my favorite food in all the world. <laughs> If I can find shrimps, uh, because I call everything shrimps, even they are camarones. Yes, these are camarones uh, with garlic. Okay, let's try it. I hope it will be hot because I'm a big fan of hot food. 
are waiting for Fermin food, which uh, should be some super tasty. Well, we are five hours thinking about what we are going to eat, and finally it arrived. So we were wishing to eat this ceviche because it's like the no, most famous dish good. here in, uh, in this village. And, uh, they will recommend us, like, even like not to break fast too much, just to get here and, uh, <laughs> and enjoy a lot of the food. Yeah. So let's go to taste this. Yeah. I have something super tasty with garlic. Super hot and super tasty, and I hope it will be picante. Sí, pruébale porque suele tener ya limón. Pruébate el jugo un poco. You can see in the in the video, but the, the, the smell is like uh, we arrived to the sea, and you can feel the humidity. It's absolutely different climate from Quito, where it was a mountain climate, and now like it's more like a tropical. Uh, we are close to 30 degrees. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, one thing that you need to know is when the when the sunset arrived is the most dangerous moment for mosquitoes. So now we are going to run for not to be killed with mosquitoes. I'm not afraid of mosquitoes, I don't have problems with mosquitoes. But for me, this is a magnet. I don't know if you see, but there is an amazing bridge which we are going to cross. So stay tuned, because it looks super, super far from here, but we will be there in three seconds. We just arrived to Manta and we are waiting for Sara, who is the, the director of Ocean Man Ecuador. And we met like three years ago, but we never met in person because of the pandemic. So it's the first time that we are going to see it live. Ah, Hola. Hola. Choca. Hola. Finally. Finally. What we are going to do first, have dinner, eat, and then rest because tomorrow we have a lot to do. A lot to start organization, uh, places around Manta to visit, and um, let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. <laughs> Hola, buenos hola, días. Hola. Eh, se encuentran en un área protegida. El refugio debía ser el primero que será para coche. Es un área conformada por mar y bosque. Eh, son 36.000 hectáreas. 5.049 terrestres y 36.000 marinas. El recorrido es de un kilómetro 8, una hora y media, dos horas de recorrido. Eh, especies, a ver, monos, aves, ardillas, mamíferos, pero están en vida silvestre. Pueden verlos como no pueden verlos. El ingreso tienen que realizarlo con un guía naturalista eh, de aquí de la zona. Eh, la entrada no tiene costo, pero sí el guía les cobra un valor por la, por la guía. Eh, sí, ya bien, ya. Eh, porque hay un grupo adentro, el ya. guía ya regresa, ellos les cobran el valor de 20 dólares por el grupo. Ya. Esta piñuela como tal es una, parte de la familia, la de, de, la, de la familia como tal, las piñas, y este tipo de piñuela se la utiliza como una cerca viva, es decir, mm -hmm. que en vez de utilizar una cerca con caño con alambre, de manera ancestral, hace cientos y miles de años, utilizaron esta planta los antepasados. Esta planta también tiene unos pequeños frutos, pequeños, unas pequeñas bromelas, unas pequeñas piñitas, que si la comemos directamente cuando están eh, maduras, que justamente viene a ser de color amarillo, tiene a ser tóxica. O sea, si te viene la muerde, se le hincha los labios. Pero si te viene corta de ambos labios, le saca la pulpa con una piñita, muy rica. No lo toquen, no deben tocar por ahora esta caña hasta que yo se lo diga. ¿Ya? Ya. Yeah. <risa> eh, de pronto, escuchemos. Bueno, le voy a presentar esta, es la caña guadúa. Yeah. Esta es la familia de los bambú. Uh -huh. Lo que es la caña guadúa, justamente en lo que es la costa ecuatoriana como tal, en esta zona, son las principales reguladoras de la plea mar y la baja mar. Uh -huh. Entonces, previo a esto, en los meses de junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, viene el tema de la garúa. Estas son las que producen todo ese fenómeno. Uh -huh. Ahora lo que se están viendo es como la marea está bajando, están absorbiendo agua y están tomando esa inclinación. Por eso escuchen a su vida. Ah. Ahora quiero decir pronto, si pueden tocar esta de aquí, más no la de acá, porque quiero mencionarle algo, que cuando ya están pequeñitas, esta aquí puede tocarle. Con las dos manos, ¿sí? Para que 
haciendo, está está fría. Sonido, va a sentir que es como una manguera que está pasando agua. Se está transformando agua en agua dulce, como tal. ¿Sí? Va a comenzar a, a, a transportar agua y está helada en la parte. Está fría, crecer, fría, cuando fría, cada fría. cinco minutos, pero un litro de litro de agua. Va a crecer hasta 40, 50 metros, ¿Metros? 60 metros de altura. We are in Pacoche Natural Reserve. Uh, this is a huge area here in, in Manta of protected uh, land and sea. 31,000 hectares, uh, acres uh, of, of reserve. So we are here in this forest. Uh, we just met a little bit of species. Here is a bamboo. Uh, we call it caña. It's a baby bamboo. <laughs> baby bamboo, baby bamboo. caña. And uh, people from a thousand years ago use it for construction. But you have to know when and where cut the bamboo because if you don't do it properly it, it will it will be a uh, it will be garbage because you have to do it uh, bamboo is normally full of water so you have to coordinate it with the moon and the sea faces to, to cut it. so here we are in this nice path and we are going to continue to search our monkeys baby bamboo baby bamboo the first time i saw a baby bamboo It's the first time I'm in jungle. Planta que se encuentra en esta zona tanto en la costa como en, en la tierra de la Amazonía y en España o en Europa se la conoce como la oreja de elefante. Uh -huh. Son las plantas que uh -huh. tienen sobre todo la hoja en forma de corazón. Uh -huh. Pero por ejemplo esto tiene el peciolo. Por ejemplo, usted hace un corte en el peciolo y tiene una, una resina, una lechecita de color blanco que se cae en la, en la piel y está ácida y te quema. Entonces yeah. en, en, en otras comunidades, en la parte de los chuaques, tiran a su alrededor justamente de sus viviendas, de sus, de sus carpas y no se meten insectos, no se meten, es un medio de protección aislante, ¿sí? pero eso también por ejemplo las comunidades como tal, a diferencia de otra que vamos a ver más adelante que es la racacha, tiene unas papas, que es comestible, no tira las papas, sí. pero sí cuando tiene el tema de la lluvia, cuando llueve, las comunidades reciben estas hojas pueden alcanzar todavía hasta 3 metros de grande, son inmensas, sí. y cuando hay el tema de lluvia, la gente de la comunidad lo utiliza como para agua, sí. se le conoce sí. como la oreja de elefante. Que va a ser un poco liviano, exacto. Eso va a ser plato. Con esto va a ser plato de circular y con las más alargadas en las cucharas. This is the fruit of the of the mate. This grow in in this tree, and uh, when it's dry, it is used like like a plate to to eat or to put some some sheets. And also uh, an interesting thing that this 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 tree have is you can see there is some plants that don't belongs to this to this tree, and there are there are like. Uh, our guide tell us like uh, the birds arrive here to sleep during the night. This is like a hotel tree, and they bring in, uh, in uh, with them some seeds, and they make uh, grow these these new plants that they give like this strange format to the, to the tree, and it's nice. These beautiful flowers you might have seen already because uh, they are used to sell in the flower shops, and the leaves are used to cook food. Uh, you put the food inside, you cook, and the food takes the taste of the leaf. And we're gonna try it later. This plant is what is used for to create the Panama hat that originally are from Manta. Even they took the name and it's called Panama, but they are original for, from here. And from this part of the of the of the palm is where they take the five the fibers and they they made this this construction in, in the hut so we will see it later when we will discover the Panama hut. We did something that you, you can do when you enter to the forest so we forget the anti-mosquitoes and we are all the time like trying to catch the mosquitoes. Well I'm going to explain you what happened with this fruit. This is a this is a this is a the fruit that the the, the all over What is the, the name in English? Higuero. Howler monkey. Howler monkey. Howler, Howler, monkey. Howler, Howler monkey. Howler monkey. Monkey. So this is the, the monkeys that live, he, live here and they eat this fruit. So it's super interesting. Max, as you can see, they, they, this is already bited by the monkey because they were here a few minutes ago. So they eat it, but they live open with a, with a function that this is small, small seeds. The, uh, when this fall, the, um, the ants take it and the, the ants, they are transporting the seeds and they are reforesting the, the, the forest. So it has double function. This is the only monkey that do this. So they are clever. They think about the reproduction and how to, uh, how to create more trees to have more, more space to live and also to be, to be feeded. Como hacían el tema del consumo los antepasados, es que tanto la hoja eh, verde la mezclaban con la coca y hacían un mixer y se la comían. 
Una Previo bomba. era como actualmente era meterse o, o consumir polvo. Previo esto aquí, los mandeños huancabilcas se metían a 20 30 metros a sacar la concha espóndilo en el momento de consumir esas plantas que son nativas por la zona. O sea, quiero mencionarles que, por ejemplo, si ustedes la hacen así seca como está, eh, la consumen como el cigarro o cigarrillo, es más fuerte que la marihuana y le lleva a la muerte. Entonces, hay que saberla exactamente consumir. Eh, quiero también mencionarles que las hojas tiernas, que son los primeros cogollitos, que son también de los brotes que vienen saliendo, cuando, por ejemplo, vienen en esta zona, por ejemplo, comen los monos obviadores, comen las ardillas, los presos, entre otros animales, funciona como una vía. Una vez que el mono obviador macho coma, comienzan todas las monas a correr porque funciona con una, con otra, con otra mona. Es una planta endémica propia de la costa ecuatoriana y previo esto de aquí es la, la pepa de marfil, con la cual se confeccionan los botones y un sinnúmero de artesanía. Eh, previo a esto es la tagua. Cuando está, bueno aquí podemos, hay que diferenciarnos, que esta es la hembra, que es la que tira el fruto uh -huh. y el macho no tira fruto. Max, this is like a movie setup. They prepare the river, the plants, with the light. The nuts, they put everywhere, the nuts, the flowers. So if you are in a place with this amount of diversity, the only thing that you have to do is just wait one second and to find something. You, we just stay here and we saw this, uh, this, how do you say Crab. 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 And uh, some small frogs, they, they started jumping here. From one point, this is an incredible, amazing place. I'm, it's my first time in jungles. From another point, I'm afraid to make every single step because wherever we go, there are super big spiders or there may be a snake. Luckily, we haven't seen any. Or there are some sounds, some leaves are falling. Oof. The jungle life is not that fun. Okay, so we are in the deepest side of this forest. A lot of more trees. And actually our guide was telling us that normally here are the site of the monkeys, but we are waiting for them. But still, he told us that in 2016, previous to the big earthquake that hit this area, in, there was a peste that killed almost 80 monkeys. And now they think that it was a premonition of the earthquake was coming. And, uh, what, what do you think about this place? Very dangerous, but very beautiful. So if you have cojones, you can come here and check this out. Uh, these giant uh, troncos were fall during the airplane. Normally termites, they, they create their, their houses or their nest in the, in the floor, but here uh, they created, they make some evolution and they created in, uh, in the, the top of, not in the top, but in the middle of these big, big trees. And uh, as you can see, if you can see, uh, there is some uh, roots in the, uh, in, in the tree and there are the tunnels that they use to climb. They take the foot in the, in the ground and they climb until their house that is over there, almost like 20 meters. This you can hear, this is the sound of the jungles, the real sound of the jungles. And we are joking between each other that they are warning that a lot of people came here and they are talking and so on. So you hear the real natural alarm of the jungle. This is a uh, Igeron. It has uh, around 500 years and uh, the roots can be 500 meters in the ground. And there are the biggest trees that you can find in, the, in this kind of forest. Uh, and this is the tree that uh, produced this, this fruit that the monkeys are eating, but we didn't see the monkeys. Bueno, este es un árbol de matapalo. Son de los bosques, eh, sobre todo predominante de los ficus, que se encuentran en esta zona. Pueden alcanzar hasta 50, 60, 70 metros. Son los árboles más altos de los bosques tropicales. Y este matapalo como tal eh, cumple la función de un regulador dentro de esta área protegida. Eh, cuando nos encontremos también funciona como un medio de primeros auxilios. Cuando nos encontremos en peligro, eh, o sobre todo como recomendación, es buscar, recomendar buscar una piedra, golpear y emite un oído, un sonido de 5 a 6 kilómetros de distancia. Es fundamental, sobre todo para las personas que ya conocemos esto, que hay una persona que se encuentra perdida. No lo podemos probar. Uh -huh. No lo podemos probar porque si viste lo que está pasando ahorita, hay unas termitas unas pequeñas adictitas que se empiezan a picar.
We are finishing our excursion to this amazing jungle. We are super close to the city Manta and we are super close to the sea, just like one kilometer from here. We are very grateful to our guide Leonardo who explained to us all the flora and fauna of this amazing place. He showed us all the plants and trees. Also, what is very important, he told us what not to touch because it may be poisonous. And we've seen a lot of lizards, big spiders, we've seen monkey, we've seen multiple of birds and we are extremely happy to have this experience and we advise you to repeat it as well next year here. Hemos llegado al faro. Anda! Can you enter al faro? Yes, please. Ah, uh, yes, it would be like 5 euro per person, please. What? And you will have the possibility to enter to the, to the lighthouse. But there's nobody here, only good morning, us. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yes, it's 5 euro per person. Why is it so expensive? <laughs> I read in the internet that it's 1 euro. Uh, you have this Actually, count. dollar. Okay. <laughs> we are going to climb to this beautiful lighthouse just behind me. Let's check how high we are now. We are now just 60 meters above the sea level. We climbed three stairs or 30. And we are going to climb this beautiful lighthouse right now. Yes, we are. A little bit of work working out with the stairs. You were, yeah, right now. <laughs> uh, we were suffering and thinking why, and maybe we can use the zoom. <laughs> and it's okay, <laughs> we can see already. <laughs> is the San Lorenzo town. Uh, one characteristic of this point is, is the farthest point from Earth in the Pacific uh, in America, uh, this San Lorenzo point. Uh, there's a beautiful view from here. Actually, uh, fr in front of us is uh, Isla de la Plata, which is a, a very, very amazing island with a lot of species in air and in the sea. So how, how far is from here? Uh, it's 30 kilometers from here. Probably something that, the, that you don't know is Sara is the best open water swimmer in uh, Ecuador for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So she's super famous. And uh, I just asked if she's planning to, to do this cross of 30 kilometers. Like uh, from Sara is like a warm up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually it's pending. It's pending because it's an amazing traverse from an island to the earth to the to the soil here so it's it's on my wish list so okay san lorenzo it's uh, very famous for fishing for this point also there the turtles came to nest here so i hope we have the chance to, to see them and beautiful views of course i know more than beautiful <laughs> yeah from here that point of view is marvelous we are yes, 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 yes. super surprised about this trip in ecuador and for those who think like ecuador is uh, not a not a hot country, we are more or less like 30 degrees with a lot of humidity, so we are in a climate more like tropical climate. Yes, like, uh, also we are in the equator, so we are closest to the sun, so that's why it's also yeah, yeah. the sun is like hit harder here. <laughs> but look, Max, what an amazing beach, and there is no one, so that that's the place that you can come to the beach and be absolutely alone in contact with the nature. Also, San Lorenzo is not a not a not a, a village with a lot of houses, so there is not too much population. We arrived to this beach. There is no one but us. The scenes here are impressive, but we wanted to swim. Mm -hmm. It said that the current is so strong that we will drown immediately. What a pity. Okay. Look how beautiful is the location. The Pacific Ocean and all its beauty. Yes? Yes. You like it much? Amazing! Do you remember we were talking about strong current? You see this water falling from my snipers? This is the strong current which smashed us. Max almost fall with his camera in the water. I uh, got the uh, water, you see? Like, How are you? I saw you falling <laughs> I almost fell. Like here? And we were standing on the sand. There was nothing, 
nothing was talking about the danger, but without danger we don't travel. Te va a morder, eh? Desde aquí. Hoy. So they can. So mono. Fermín just showed to us the unique technique how to catch the crabs. Anda. Bye bye, my friend. Here in San Lorenzo is famous to be a turtle nesting place. As you can see along the beach are these structures, white structures, which indicate that here is a turtle nest. Uh, the, the eggs are underneath the, the, the sand and they do this kind of protection to let people know that here is a turtle nest so kids won't uh, move the sand to take care of the dogs and so people know that here are the the turtles and try to protect the, the surroundings. Anda, anda. Con vistas al mar. We are going to enter a very interesting place. We are going to discover all the process how Panama hats are done, how much time it takes to prepare one hat, what are the prices and also how to make a shape. So let's enter and check what is going on inside. Gracias a todos y muy buenos días Ecuador. Es un auténtico placer para, para Usenman eh, llegar a, a Ecuador por segundo, segundo año consecutivo. Debido a la pandemia no, no, no tuvimos la posibilidad de venir el año pasado y estamos absolutamente encantados con, con el país. Muchísimas gracias a todos por la, por la acogida que hemos tenido y, y vemos un grandísimo futuro en las aguas abiertas eh, aquí en Ecuador.
Welcome to the second day of Ocean Man Manta. We are in Ecuador. Today is the most important day of the race because today we have full Ocean Man distance, which is 10 kilometers, and half Ocean Man distance, which is 5 kilometers. You can feel this tension in the air. People were getting ready. We eat good, we sleep enough to do our best today in the beautiful Pacific Ocean to fight with the waves to prove your best and to beat the last record you just did. So welcome to the race venue and let's see who is already here. What we are doing now is uh, we are we are checking that everything is okay. We are at the beginning of the race. We are more or less at the first kilometer. And um, we need to be sure that all the all the people that is, is inside the water is doing the, the, the right task. Also looking for the security of the, of the swimmers. Um, so our task is going with the first, coming back, going to the first and coming back. And second. Now it's 6.49 in the morning. There is a 19 minutes from the start of 10K. And in a few minutes we are going to come back again because we have to start at 7 in the morning or 5k so it will be all swimmers together inside the water. What I like about open water is that you have so many elements that will challenge you and the fastest is not necessarily the better swimmer. It's not going to be first, first because a real good open water swimmer is the one that can adjust, identify and adjust uh, the swim to the situation, to the elements. Of that day. Personally, I love swimming because since I started as, the, as a little girl, uh, is when you are in the in the water, uh, naked, <laughs> just with a suit, uh, you are at the equal level to anyone, no matter what. Um, it's not that other sports when you can have well, you have better equipment, but it's not uh, a great difference in, in, in one swim set with, with another. It's, it's actually a bit, and especially to swimming in the ocean is because the you have no boundaries and uh, a swim like an ocean man can be a really good a really easy one or a really challenging one so you when you are in the ocean uh, a lot of possibilities so that's what i really like it Okay, this is a coconut and this is actually a palm fruit. What is the most important characteristic of this cocoa? Is that inside there's some water and the water has got a very special flavor and it's a bit salty and a bit sweet. And also next to the water there's a little of meat that you can eat. So this is a coconut. What we do is we cut on top and then we put on the straw in this, yeah. look at the water, and then you can enjoy it. <laughs> wow! Have yourself. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Max, please film the moment of my first coconut ever. Get out of it. Sweet and salty. Yeah? It is sweet and salty. Sweet yeah. and salty. Yeah? Do you like wow. it? Wow. Yes, I it's like French. it a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yes, and now I want to enjoy it. It was a really great experience. Uh, I think people were happy. It was really amazing to watch everyone cross the arch and with the medal and with the dream fulfilled. So, of course, I am super happy. And the, all the tiredness, all the bad nights is like half the price. That is to be here today after the, the, the ceremony and be able to share it with everybody. I feel really very happy, it's very happy to see that all the effort that we have done and when I'm saying we is every single member of the team 
is uh, is for something, for something special, and the most special thing is to see everyone of the swimmers happy. They really enjoy it as well as we enjoy it. So I'm very happy and very thankful, thankful with all the Oceanman family and Oceanman team. Thank you. So meet you in Galapagos. See you in Galapagos. See you in Galapagos. See you in Galapagos. See you in Galapagos.